Hi everyone. So in this particular video, we'll be understanding the concept of earned value management, also called as earned value analysis in our Microsoft project window. So basically what is earned value management? Earned value management is nothing, but it is a kind of a method through which we can uh, determine the health of our project in terms of schedule as well as in terms of cost. There are several parameters inside the envelope of uh, EVM through which we can uh, understand or we we can analyze that how our project is actually performing. So in the previous video, we have already updated the status of our project in Microsoft project. As you can see, for first two activities, they were 100% complete. And uh, we have also updated the actual start and actual finish dates. Baseline duration was two days, but the actual duration was three days for this activity. Similarly, for second activity, the baseline duration was six days, but the actual duration was four days. And third activity, it was in progress. Four days were already passed and eight days were remaining as against the 10 days of baseline duration. It was supposed to get completed in a total of 12 days. So with this particular progress status, we will be analyzing the parameters related to earned value management and we will be understanding each and every parameter in detail. Okay. So before I execute the EVM process in MSP, I would like you all to just understand each and every terminology in a little brief through this particular presentation. Okay, so I'll put this in presentation mode and I'll just open the highlighter. Okay, so starting with the earned value management theory. So I have taken a very basic example to help you understand all the terminologies. There will be almost 10 to 12 basic terminologies. So the example says, for example, there is a particular activity I have taken. I have not taken the example of a full project. This one activity will be more than enough to help you grasp the, the complete concept of EVM. So a activity is there, which is of five months. Okay. So the project is starting at this particular point and the project is of five months. And right now we are at this particular point. We are noticing the status of our project after the completion of third month. So as per the budget, if you see, the quantities that were scheduled or budgeted or planned are given in this particular row. In first month, 100 cubic meter of the concrete was supposed to happen. In second month, 200. In third month, 400 meter cube. In fourth month, 100. And in fifth month, there was no concreting since usually towards the end of the project, this concreting, reinforcement and shuttering ends and finishing works and MEP works and external works are supposed to happen. And the rate that we considered in our budget is 5,000 rupees per meter cube. So if you calculate the cost of the concreting in first month, it will be 5 lakh rupees. In second month, it will be, it will be 10 lakh rupees. Third month, it will be 20 lakh rupees. Fourth month, 5 lakh. And in fifth month, it will be zero because there is no concreting that is planned. So the very first term is your planned value, which is also called as the budgeted cost of work schedule, BCWS. So what is planned value? Planned value is nothing but the total cost that was planned or that was budgeted till your status point. See, for these three months, you have to just add the cost of this budget, which will be 5 plus 10 plus 20, which will be equivalent to rupees 35 lakh. So this is the plan. If I ask you what was what is the planned value or BCWS till fourth month, suppose if we are here, then it will be plus 5 lakh in this particular uh, numeric. So it will be 40 lakh rupees. So what is the planned value for the complete project? It will be again 40 lakh rupees because in fifth month it is zero. Okay. So I hope the very first parameter is clear to you. So planned value is nothing. Totally it is based on the budgeted cost for the activity or for the project till your status point. Okay. Now moving on to the next slide. So this is just the same table that we saw in the previous slide. But here one more table has been inserted, which is your actual quantity. So usually what happens, you plan 100 meter cube, but you will be able to do some less or maybe some more in some cases. So instead of 100 meter cube, we executed 80 meter cube in first month. In second month, as against uh, 200 meter cube, we executed 100 meter cube. In month three, as against 400 meter cube, we were able to execute complete quantity, which is 400. So we are right now here. So we don't know the progress of fourth month and fifth month because currently we are just right here. Okay. Now comes the other parameter, which is your earned value or budgeted cost of work performed. As this particular term says, BCWP, 
cost of work that you have performed, but it will be budgeted. It will not be the actual cost that you have performed. Quantities you will have to take actual, but you will have to take the rates, which are the budgeted rates. So how to calculate this BCWP? Nothing. You have to just add the actual quantities that you did and you have to multiply these quantities with the budgeted rates, which is your 5,000 rupees. So 80 plus 100 plus 400 multiplied by 5,000 rupees and this will give you 29 lakh rupees. So what does what this parameter shows you? If you go to the previous slide, you were supposed to complete a work of 35 lakh rupees till this particular point, but you failed and you could only do rupees 29 lakh rupees as against 35 lakh rupees. That means you have executed lesser quantities and your schedule is lagging behind. This will, these two parameters will help you to assess the schedule status of your project because you are taking the quantities actual, but rates will be same in both the cases. In first cases, again, for planned value also rate was same. For earned value also rate is same, but quantities are in previous, the quantities were planned. And here the quantities are actual ones. Okay. The other way to calculate the earned value is to multiply the planned value with the percentage completion of the quantity. See the quantities that were supposed to be completed was 100 plus 200 plus 400, which will be 700 meter cube. But actually you did 400 plus 100 plus 80. You could only do 580 meter cube. So when you divide 580 by 700 and multiply it by the planned value, you will get the earned value. Okay. So I hope the parameter of earned value is also clear to you. Now moving on to actual cost. What is actual cost? It is also called as ACWP, actual cost of work performed. So here you have to take the actual quantities and you have to take the actual rates. So uh, budgeted rates were 500, 5,000 rupees per meter cube. But when we actually performed the concreting, we came to know that we are giving the vendor 6,000 rupees. So you have to add all the actual quantities, which will be 400 plus 100 plus 80. And then you have to multiply it by 6,000 rupees. Or other way is simply add the actual cost that you incurred every month. For first month, you incurred 0.48 lakh. Second month, you incurred 6 lakh rupees. And in third month, you incurred 24 lakh rupees. So when you add all of this, it will come up to 30.48 lakh. So this is the actual cost. So actual cost has nothing to do with the budgeted cost or budgeted quantities and all. Whatever you do every month, you just add them up. That's it. Now coming to budget at completion. So budget at completion is just the budgeted cost for the complete activity or for the complete project till its completion point. So you will have to again refer the very first table here, which contains the budgeted cost. So what you budgeted in first month, you budgeted 5 lakh. Second month, you budgeted 10 lakh. Third month, you budgeted 20 lakh. Fourth month, you budgeted 5 lakh. In fifth month, you budgeted 0 lakh rupees. So you have to add all of this and this will give you 40 rupees lakh. Okay, so this will be your budget at completion. Now coming to one very important parameter related to schedule, which is your schedule variance. So I already told you to measure the schedule. You will need PV and EV, first two parameters. So difference of earned value and Planned value will help you to assess that how much are you lagging in terms of schedule. If SV is greater than zero, then that means you are ahead of schedule. Why? Because you are executing more than the planned value when you take everything in terms of budget. As per the budget, if EV is more, then you are going smoother as per the budget. If SV is less than zero, this indicates that you are behind schedule. If SV is zero, which means EV and PV both are same. That means you are totally on schedule. So in this particular example, EV was 29 lakh rupees and PV was 35. So you will get a minus of 6 lakh rupees as the schedule variance, which totally uh, shows that you are behind your schedule which is the reason why you did less quantities. You are not able to do the complete quantities as per the budget because of which your schedule variance is coming as negative. Now, what is SPI, Schedule Performance Index? Whatever you are taking the difference here, you just have to take the ratio here. If SPI is greater than one, it will be ahead of schedule, less than one behind of schedule, equal to one on schedule. So again, here also SPI should be less than one. Okay, These two things should give the same answer. It should give you behind schedule. This should also give you behind schedule. Okay. If this gives you ahead of schedule, then this should also give you ahead of schedule because this is 
same one or the same thing only. No, this is the difference. This is the ratio. So uh, SPI is coming as 0.83, which shows that you are lagging the schedule by 17%. Okay. So which also means that you could only perform 83% of the work, which you were supposed to perform. You were supposed to perform, suppose 100% uh, of the work, but you could only perform 83% of the work. Okay. So I hope this particular thing is also clear to you. So the, see this 83% you can also get if you divide the quantities. If I go back, then you could see that we did 580 meter cube of the quantity as against 700. So if you divide these two things, then also you will get a number which is equal to 0.83, which you are getting here. Okay. So this is one or the same thing. So if you understand the logic, there is no need to grasp or mug up the formulas. Now the same thing with respect to cost. Now the indicators which will help you to determine the cost will be your earned value and your actual cost. Okay. So if your CV is greater than zero, how to calculate the CV? EV minus AC. If your cost variance is greater than zero, it indicates that you are under budget. If CV is less than zero, it indicates that you have exceeded your budget or planned. CV is equal to zero. That means you are totally on your budget. So if you see CV is 29 lakh rupees and uh, your AC is, sorry, EV is 29 lakh rupees and actual cost was 30.48, which shows that you are exceeding the budget by this particular amount. Uh, if you saw, then uh, you took the rates, actual rates as 6,000 rupees, whereas the planned rates were 5,000 rupees. So which is the reason that you are already exceeding the cost. Okay. Then coming to CPI. CPI, again, it is same as the cost variance, but in terms of ratio. So if CPI is equal to EV divided by AC, if greater than one under budget, less than one over budget, equal to one indicates in budget. Okay. So CPI will be 29 divided by 30.48, which will be 0.95. That means you are over budget by 5%. Or we can also say that the project has exceeded by 5% of the budgeted cost. Okay. So... Now moving on, uh, now we are in estimate to complete. What is estimate to complete? Estimate to complete is nothing but whatever uh, balance cost is required to complete the balance project is called as ETC. So there is a formula to calculate the ETC budget at completion minus EV divided by CPI. So if you put all these values, you will get the estimate to complete as 11.58. This number shows that this much cost we might incur to complete the balance activity of concreting. Okay. What is estimate at completion? Estimated completion means whatever you have already done and whatever you are expected to done. So actual cost plus your estimate to complete. So AC will be AC. ETC will be this particular formula. So if you keep this here, you will get the formula for estimate at completion. If you put all the values, you will get the estimate at completion as 42.06 lakh rupees. Now, what is variance at completion? See, this is estimate at completion. You are expecting that your complete activity or your project will get completed in 42.06 lakh rupees. But how much, how much was the budget that you prepared for the complete activity? It is called as the budget at completion. So the difference between budget at completion and estimate at completion is called as the variance at completion. So variance at completion is nothing but what will be the difference in your cost when your activity or your project will get completed. So if a VAC is negative, this shows cost overrun. If VAC is positive, it shows cost savings. So in this particular example, VAC is coming as uh, minus of rupees 2.06 lakh rupees. So that is all for the theory related to your uh, uh, earned value management. So now we'll be calculating and analyzing the parameters related to earned value management in our Microsoft project window. We have already studied the theory related to EVM. So now it is the time to execute that. So to do that, there are two methods. First of all, in your main window itself, you can go to the end and you can add the columns related to EVM, like your schedule performance index or your CPI, then your estimated completion and so on. The other simpler way would be to region to generate the by default given table of earned value in your MSV. 
how to do that you just need to go to the view tab here and in the section of data you can see one option of tables here so when you click on this down arrow then you will be able to see some built in table formats like cost entry hyperlink schedule tracking and so on so right now whatever window is displayed currently this is called as the entry table but we want to open the earned value table. So for that, you need to go to this more tables and here you will see the option of earned value here. So when you click on apply, you will be able to see the table of earned value, which already has some predefined parameters like your planned value, earned value, actual cost and so on. But some columns are still missing. So we can add those columns, which is not a big deal. You just insert column here and mention schedule performance index. Then here you insert column and mention cost performance index. Then your EAC should be mentioned in the last. So I'll just delete it here and I'll paste it EAC here. Okay. Then apart from that, you need to add some more columns like your actual duration. Then your uh, percentage complete. Then remaining duration. Then your baseline duration and then your actual cost and baseline cost. I think that's all. These columns will be enough for you to calculate all the parameters related to EVM. But one more thing which will be required is your task usage form. So how to display two windows one at a time. So MSP offers this particular feature to us in the view tab itself. If you go to the section of windows and if you click on new window, then you will be able to any other view apart from the present view. Like we want task usage form to be displayed. We'll click on OK. So now you see task usage form is also displayed here. So here you need to add some columns. Like I'll just delete these columns of start and finish because these are not required. So instead of that, I'll add the columns of baseline start and baseline finish. So first of all, I'll add baseline start. Then here I'll add baseline finish. Then apart from that, actual start and actual finish is also required. Actual finish. Sorry, this I'll delete. I'll put actual start first. and then actual finish. So this is actual start and this is actual finish. So now we are ready to calculate all the parameters. So we'll go back to our earned value table and we will start with the planned value. So first of all, what is planned value? I already defined planned value, which is nothing but whatever is the budgeted cost for your activity or for your project till the status point. So you should very well know if I go to my project view, then the status date has been mentioned as 4th of November 2018. So remember this date in mind because this will be used throughout. Okay. So for site clearance, since this site clearance activity has already got completed, the percentage completion is 100%. So for this planned value will be your budgeted cost itself. So if you go to the baseline cost, you will be able to see the baseline cost is 8,000 rupees. And here it is 68,000 rupees for your excavation activity, which is also showing here. Otherwise, you can also go to the task usage form and you can analyze these costs. So for site clearance, if you see, so this activity already got completed. So baseline start was 22nd October and baseline finish was 23rd October. So calculate the cost of 22nd and 23rd October. So this is your 22nd October and this is your 23rd October. So all the costs related to these two days will give you the total planned value for your site clearance. So engineer one, you see 2000 and 2000 rupees. Similarly for Mason, it will be 2000 and 2000 rupees. So it will be a total of 8000 rupees. Okay. Similarly, for excavation also you can calculate, but I'm not going to do that again. So uh, plan value for site clearance and excavation is clear to us. Now coming to foundation. So what is the planned value for foundation? So to calculate that, we need to go to the task form. Since this activity is not fully complete, so we can easily calculate this only through the task usage form. So for foundation activity, you go here and you see that baseline start is your 31st October and baseline finishes 10th of November. But actually this activity started on something and something. We don't care about actual start right now because we are calculating the planned value. So till your status date, which is your 4th of November, whatever will be the cost, you have to add all those costs. 
So your status date is 4th of November here. So before 4th of November, what is the total cost for your foundation will be by adding all these four particular cells. So your 4 lakh 4500 rupees, just open the calculator and add this 4 lakh 4500 rupees, then your 4500, 4500 and 4500 three times. So when you will add all these four cells, you will get a total of 4 lakh 18,000 rupees, which is displayed here. Okay. So I hope planned will now coming to the section of earned value. So I told you earned value, it is nothing but your baseline cost or the budgeted cost will be multiplied by the percentage completion. So whatever work you have achieved with respect to your budget will be your earned value. So for site clearance and excavation, if you see your baseline cost is 8,000 and 68,000 rupees and your percentage completion is 100% and 100% respectively. So your earned value will be similar to your baseline cost for these two activities. But for foundation, it will not be the case because your percentage completion is not 100%. Instead, it is some 33%. But there is a twist to calculate the earned value for foundation. What is the twist? This particular foundation activity, if you see, if you go to the task usage form, then for foundation, you see PCC. So PCC, it has a kind of accrual, which is your start accrual instead of prorated. So this 4 lakh rupees will, will anyway accrue on the very first day. So even for earned value, this 4 lakh rupees will come as it is. So you will have to use the formula by deducting this 4 lakh rupees from the baseline cost. So if you see your baseline cost is 4 lakh and 45,000. So what you have to do, first of all, you have to deduct this 4 lakh rupees because this 4 lakh rupees is a one-time cost. So you cannot apply the whole formula to 4 lakh rupees. So you have to take this 45,000 and you will have to multiply this with 33% and it will give you 15,000 rupees. Then this 15,000 rupees will have to add it to 4 lakh rupees to give you 4 lakh 15,000 rupees as your earned value. So again, I'll explain you that earned value is calculated by multiplying the percentage completion with the budgeted cost or the baseline cost. But if your certain activity has a cost which is not prorated, prorated means the cost is distributed equally in all the days. But for PCC, the cost is not distributed equally. Instead, it is a one-time cost. So whenever it is a one-time cost, you need to calculate or consider that cost very separately. Okay. So that is why I deducted this 4 lakh rupees. But anyway, this 4 lakh is coming on the very first day. So I added 4 lakh rupees later on by calculating the earned value for the balance 45,000. Okay. So now coming on to the actual cost. What is actual cost? Whatever cost you have actually incurred, you can simply add all those costs till your status date. So for site clearance and excavation, everything it will be equal to the actual cost only you can calculate this using the task usage form also i'll go to the task usage i'll show you for foundation only rest you can calculate yourself so your actual cost will be just this cost this you have to add all these four costs which will give you four lakh and eighteen thousand rupees okay so this is how you calculate the actual cost now coming on to the schedule variance. So how to calculate the schedule variance? See, you can use see the formula here also when you place the cursor here. So schedule variance is nothing but your earned value minus your planned value. Okay. So what is your earned value here for first case? It is 8,000 and here also it is 8,000. So your schedule variance will be zero for first activity. Similarly for excavation also it will be zero. Now you will argue that site clearance was extended by one day. The baseline duration was two days but actual duration was three days. Then also schedule variance is zero, which means that your project is on schedule. The main fundamental concept behind this is that schedule variance is only applicable to the activities which are in progress because whatever activities have already got completed for that earned value and planned value will be same. So that is why SV will always be zero for the completed activities. But for foundation, if you see, if you deduct EV minus PV, then it will give you minus 3000 rupees, which shows that your activity is behind the schedule since this value is in negative. Okay. Similarly, you can calculate the SPI also. SPI is nothing but your schedule performance index. It is calculated by dividing the earned value with the planned value. So for first two activities, it will be one because these are completed activities and earned value and planned values always same for the completed activities. But here, if you see, you have to divide this 
four lakh fifteen thousand with four lakh eighteen thousand, which shows that your activity is behind schedule. Your foundation activity is not running as per the schedule. Instead, it is some zero point zero one times behind the schedule. Okay, one percent behind the schedule. We can easily say. Then coming to cost variance. Cost variance is calculated by deducting EV and AC. EV minus AC is the formula for cost variance. So if you see for uh, site clearance, EV is eight thousand rupees and AC is twelve thousand rupees. So it will be minus four thousand rupees, which shows that the cost overrun has happened in the site clearance activity. But for excavation, your EV is sixty-eight thousand and AC is fifty-two thousand. So you have saved some sixteen thousand rupees in this particular activity. Now for the third activity, if you de uh, deduct, then it will be minus of three thousand and two hundred sixteen. So again for third activity, your variance at completion is. Negative. Sorry, this uh, variance at uh, CV is negative of three thousand rupees. Now coming to CPI. So CPI is simply calculated by dividing your EV with AC. So you can calculate this for first activity. It will be less than one, which clearly shows that your activity is over budget. And for second activity, it is one point three one, which shows that your activity is under the budget. There is no cost overrun. Here it is zero point nine nine, which shows that your third activity of foundation is over budgeted, but not to a very good amount. Very less amount of over budget has happened. Now coming to budget at completion. So budget at completion is nothing but the total cost of your activity, planned cost or the baseline cost till the completion. So your BAC will be similar to your baseline cost. So just take these three costs as it is and place it there: eight thousand, sixty-eight thousand, and your four lakh forty-five thousand. Okay, as it is, you have to place it in BAC. Now, what is variance at completion? Simply BAC minus EAC. But for that, you first need to calculate your estimated completion. So, how to calculate EAC? So, EAC there is a very big formula for EAC. You can just use this particular formula to calculate your estimated completion. You put all those values there, and you will be able to get the estimated completion. What is the meaning of estimate com at completion? Estimated completion means that when your activity or when your project will get completed, this will be a Total cost that will be incurred by the end of this activity, or the expected cost towards the end of the activity. So it is twelve thousand here, fifty-two thousand here, and four lakh forty-eight thousand here. So for first two activities, estimate at completion will be similar to the actual cost. If you see, because these two activities have already got completed, okay. But for the activity which is in progress, it will not be the case. Now variance at completion, it is the difference of the budget at completion and the estimated completion. Whatever you budgeted and whatever you ended up at, so you have to take the difference. So first activity has an overrun of four thousand rupees. Second activity has a saving of sixteen thousand rupees. Whereas third activity is estimated as of now to have an overrun of thirty two hundred rupees by the end of the completion of foundation. Okay, so this is all about the parameters related to your earned value analysis. But one more thing, if I tell you, for earned value calculations, we use the concept of percentage complete. But we can also use the concept of physical percentage complete, which we will understand in our next video. So that is all for this particular video. I hope the concept of EVM is clear to you all. Thank you, everyone.